Uh, next up, I would like to introduce um, two uh, technology engineers from IBM, uh, Dale and Steven. Uh, Dale is a senior technology engineer and Steven is a technology engineer. Uh, Steven and Dale, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Hello. So today they're going to talk a little bit about adding your first async API to your app in 30 minutes. All right. And I'll, uh, without further ado, I'll hand it right over to you. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, let's go on to the next slide, Stephen. So, I, hello, everyone. Uh, as you heard, uh, my name is Dale. I'm here with my colleague, Stephen. We're from a bit of IBM called Client Engineering. Our job is to work with our customers. We're both developers, and, and our job is to work with customers to help them do business transformation things. We work uh, with a variety of types of technology. Uh, we co-create with our customers, and our job is to help customers get more use out of technology to, to improve and grow their business. And that's the kind of thing we want to share some of our experiences uh, around that with you today. Uh, next slide, please, Stephen. Um, a lot of the customers that we work with uh, we find that they've built very data-centric applications, very data-centric architectures. They build their apps around collecting, storing, accessing data at rest with patterns like you can see here. I'm sure you've seen you know, microservices-based, REST API-based uh, applications before. Uh, next slide, please, Tim. Um, but increasingly, what they tell us is that they want event-centric aspects in their apps. They want their apps to be able to emit and process and respond to data while it's in flight in real time. But our experience with working with them is that it's not all or nothing. And we find a blend of both is often beneficial. And that's what we're showing on this diagram here. This idea of, you know, you've got microservices, you've got applications that are using REST APIs and are making synchronous calls to each other. But they're also, for some uh, data sort of movement, they're also using asynchronous patterns. They're publishing and subscribing uh, to events. Um, this blend means you don't have to start from scratch. It means you don't have to throw away what you've already got. And that's kind of the idea that we want to be talking about today. We want to give you a few ideas to inspire you for how you can take a simple early step from that synchronous uh, data-centric approach to start bringing in elements of event-driven architecture um, and to, to introduce your first asynchronous API. Uh, next slide, please. So the first step is to introduce an event backbone, something that can receive and handle and distribute the events amongst the applications in your enterprise. Now, for our demos today, we're going to be using Apache Kafka. It's, it's not the only option, but it is super common. It's widely supported. There's a rich and vibrant ecosystem around it. Um, you can get it for free and open source from kafka.apache.org. Um, or you can get it supported from a variety of vendors. I mean, naturally, as Stephen and I from IBM, we're going to be using um, our sort of a distribution of Kafka called event streams. But what we're going to be showing you would work really with, with any Kafka at all. So that's kind of the background. We want to show you how you can start embracing asynchronous. We're going to show you a bunch of demos of how you can get things in and out of an event backbone. So I'll hand over to Stephen for our first demo of how we can start getting events onto that backbone. Uh, awesome. Just finding the unmute button. Uh, well, uh, well, morning, everyone. I know it's afternoon for uh, most of the people on the call. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Dale. So uh, as Dale was kind of explaining, uh, you know, the benefits of, of introducing the, the event backbone and, and introducing that event, event side to your architecture, uh, we're going to kick off with one of our three demos that we have today. And, and uh, obviously, we're going to kick off with hopefully what is going to be quite a straightforward, simple demo that, that should hopefully give everyone on the call a, a bit of a, a good introduction to, to the topic and, and how this can add value, right? So this is a, a user interface for event streams where we can kind of um, create topics, where we can actually bring in messages. Uh, and I guess this is our backbone uh, as Dale was speaking about, right? And, you know, we, when we were putting this uh, talk together, we had a, quite a bit of discussion in terms of, hey, what, what is the best way to, uh, you know, bring across that first basic view of, um, value when it when it comes to event driven architecture. So, the the, the first um, kind of thing that popped up for, for, for I guess both of us was around uh, a really good use case of, of this is GitHub, where you have a lot of these commits, where you have a lot of data coming in and out constantly. What if you wanted to get that data, put it to a topic, and and then you know what what you do after that, you know, there's it, it's endless, right? Um, and this this first one uh, using GitHub because it has an inbuilt 
thing for for uh, inbuilt system for webhooks uh, where you can do a post re uh, request uh, post uh, request straight from the the settings of each repo. It makes it really easy. So uh, let let's see the process of that. So I'm in my event streams UI, and uh, first, what I need to create is a topic. Um, you know, without a topic, I have nothing that I can actually push messages to. And we'll get a, uh, give it a, you know a, a good name. So I'm just going to call it GitHub commit because uh, that's exactly what this topic is going to be filled with and we'll leave all these you know additional kind of um parts or, or, or settings as default just for the basis of this demo not not to take you know too long for each of these demos um but you know with each of these you can go into the nuances and and when you get to you know your your proper systems uh you know for clients or for yourself or companies etc you will want to look at each of these and and, and make sure each of these kind of fit fit exactly what you want. So once we click that, you can see um, our new uh, our new topic pops up here, github.commit. And of course, there's nothing there, right? If there was, uh, uh, it'd be a bit spooky uh, because right now there's nothing being pushed to it. And um, this is simply just a topic at this point. So what is that step that we now need to do to, to push to this? So if I quickly switch to uh, my GitHub here, uh, this is, just the repo that Adele and I have been using to keep some of the, the files for this um, this very demo. And uh, if I've, I've just come to the settings, to the webhooks uh, part of the settings. And, and this is where, uh, and it might look familiar to a lot of you if, if you're quite familiar with GitHub, and especially if you've ever done anything to do with, let's say, for example, pipelines, where you want to, you know, you've been triggering a pipeline off the back of any commit. What, and what you would do for that, and, and what we're going to do for this is, Anytime a certain event happens, we want to send a post request, as it says here. And luckily, GitHub has this kind of uh, built-in feature, um, making it quite easy for us. So I'll click, click Add Webhook, and we have this simple form. And um, we'll just need to fill in a couple of things. Uh, and one of the key things is where we, uh, you know, posting this message to. And for that, why I switch back to Event Streams, uh, you'll see this this button here, Connect to this topic. Uh, and if I scroll down here, we'll have this endpoint, and and that is essentially the external URL for this uh, event streams um, instance. What I've done uh, off screen here is I've copied that down, and I've also added a a, a slight um, or appended a slight uh, additional thing to the end of that, which is forward slash topics uh, forward slash the name of this topic, so GitHub commits. Uh, and forward slash records. And that is always the same sort of format that you need to do when you're when you're kind of uh, posting to a uh, event streams topic. So you'll see that once I post it into the payload URL, that's simply what I've just added to the URL that's already given to me by the UI. Content type, I wanna post in JSON. And again, for the sake of this demo and speed, we're going to disable any kind of sort of security or SSL verification. Um, again, maybe you would look into that uh, for for a production environment. And and we're going to keep everything else as as uh, default and add the webhook. Now, again, if if you've used this before, you know that once you add uh, this webhook, you usually get a a test push, and we'll see that here, and we can see a success. Actually, if we switch to our event streams, and you'll see that already back, uh, updated in the background. We have our first message, which is just sort of a test one, not nothing special there. But just to show how this works, I'm going to make a quick edit to our README and just say, um, "Hey everyone," uh, and I'm just going to add that and commit uh, demo time. And just push. Now that's going to push to our main branch. Uh, and actually, I won't even look at our repo and just uh, give it a few seconds. And we should see as long as this has pushed, uh, we could see, and there it is, a one new message has arrived. So give that a little refresh. Uh, and we have that come through right there uh, with all the information that we need. And just as a quick uh, look, We'll see, I uh, usually put this in, uh, we'll just put it in a, ah, there you go, I'll just even put it there. And if I scroll to the left, you'll be able to see actually the output we get and how you might want to use it, right? It has a bunch of information on, you know, who who did it, what, what file was changed, which branch it was from. 
Uh, and that was all in the span of what, you know, I think that this first day was about five minutes only uh, where, where we've already created uh, a, a bit of that event driven uh, architecture, right? Or, or, or brought in an, a, a, a sample of it. But um, th this was quite straightforward because GitHub had, had, has that kind of feature there of webhooks. What happens when you're you know, looking at external services or application where maybe that's not integrated or in, you, you might need an extra step or two to get that in. So uh, we'll switch over to Dale uh, to, to walk us through a, a different scenario now. So can we switch screens to, to me, please? Uh, fantastic, thank you. Yeah, so what Stephen showed you is, you know, any of your existing enterprise applications that can make HTTP calls can start contributing uh, events to the event backbone. Um, and as you saw, it only took a few seconds because a lot, all our applications can make HTTP calls, right? But like you said, there are other ways as well. So for our next demo, um, we're going to use a database. Uh, as another example, because I'm assuming it feels like a safe assumption to say you've probably got a database somewhere in your architecture, somewhere in your enterprise, right? Um, so I've created a really simple uh, database called Arch Demo, uh, and I have created a table in it called Demo. You can see that on the left here, um, it's just three column, really flat, simple table. Uh, I'm going to be putting quotes in here. So. And actually, I'll, I'll show you the kind of thing I mean by inserting another one. So I can just put new rows into this table. So when data, you know, you've got this database, uh, data is, you know, rows are being inserted, rows are being modified, rows are being deleted. You can think of those as events. You can think of those as events that applications in your enterprise might want to respond to in real time asynchronously. So you could expose this database, changes to this database as an asynchronous API. So what we've done is... Uh, we've set up a connector, and there's loads of different types of connector. Um, so because this is a Postgres database, we're using a Postgres connector. I had to give it a tiny bit of configuration to tell it you know, the name of my database, the connection details for the database. Um, that's how I want the, the, the events, the changes from the database to be turned into events. Um, but that was it, you know, a couple of dozen lines of configuration, that's all. Um, it really only took a, a few minutes. And what I get is a topic on my event backbone um, called, and what I get is it's the database name and the schema name and the table name. So for every table I'm, I'm doing change data capture for, I get a separate topic for. Uh, and now applications can uh, respond to changes in my database in real time. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I wrote a really quick, simple app um, that what it's gonna do is subscribe to events from this topic. Uh, and then every time it gets an event, it's just going to print it out. So it's it's a really simple, noddy uh, demo app just to show you the idea. So I'm going to start that running now. Oops. <coughs> and while I'm doing that, I'll get my next. So you can see the um, the database rows that are already here. What I'm printing out here is what was the event? C means create. So something was created, and that was the row that was there. C means create, and this was the row. So if I insert a new row into my database on the left here, you see an event immediately turn up. If I delete a row from my database, uh, you see uh, operation D, something is deleted. Um, so what we're showing here is, you know, I have, with just a couple of dozen lines of configuration, exposed uh, my critical enterprise database um, through an asynchronous API. So applications can subscribe to receive events. Um, and you know, I, I picked a database for this, but really uh, there are hundreds of connectors. So a lot of existing applications and systems that you're running, there are connectors available that would allow you to expose um, events from those uh, applications. So we've shown you a couple of ways that you can take your existing apps, your existing systems, and get events out of them and have them contribute those events to the event backbone. Finally, uh, if we can switch back to Stephen's screen, um, we'll show you an example of how you can make use of the notifications from that event backbone. Fantastic. Thanks, Dale. Um, and yeah, exactly like Dale said, right? So we have this great um, new, you know, new, new topic that's getting all these notifications, uh, or all these new messages, sorry, um, from our database changes. Uh, how can we get that, you know, make a bit of use of that? What is the easiest way or one of the easy ways to, to get a bit of um, use out of that? So having a look at this, uh, this slide quickly, um, we have this event backbone getting from that, uh, you know, different microservice that we're, we're pushing to. 
but another op uh, option is the one in the top right. We, we post to some form of application, uh, you know, it, it can be quite, quite a wide range of ones. Uh, the, the ones that, uh, the one that we thought would be quite a good one to show today is, is Slack, because I think everyone or most people are, are, have either used it or using it currently. And, and it's one of those ones that you think, ah, okay, that, that would actually be quite useful. You know, if you have, for example, um, you know, a, a, a database of support tickets, uh, maybe you could indicate to a specific channel that there's a, there's a new row added, uh, therefore a new ticket, you know, have a look, for example. So let's switch. Uh, and for this, we're going to use uh, another application uh, or another service within the same sort of realm of uh, event streams. Um, uh, and this is called App Connect. Uh, it's part of the same sort of cloud pack, as we call it. Uh, and and it, its main purpose is to integrate different uh, sort of applications and data across environments. And it's got this, um, you know, quite straightforward uh, UI and I've, I've started to create a flow. And, and it's going to be a very simple two node flow. Uh, and what do, we, what do we want or how do we want to start the flow, right? And, and of course, that is going to be Kafka. And that is going to be the topic that Dell has just made. So I've connected um, a, a new account. Uh, I can quickly show you what that looks like when you create. But this, simply you're giving it um, uh, the, the sort of IP address or uh, address of our um, event streams topic or instance that I showed you earlier. Uh, we'll give it a schema so it can uh, deserialize the data coming from our topic from the database. And we'll want to also give uh, the certificate for that schema as well so it's able to actually use it securely. Uh, so this has already been done uh, by myself prior to this. So we're using account one for that. And uh, the only option we have to, to trigger this is a new message, which makes sense. So I'll give that a click. That should uh, load in a second or two, and it will load up all the topics that we have. So we can see the one uh, that we created in demo number one, and uh, this one that we just created now uh, uh, that, uh, that there was demoing. So Arc demo, public demo, and a uh, few few options that we'll leave as default. And what we want to do is uh, pick our schema so we're able to deserialize that data coming in. So once we do that, we'll see the actual schema for, for the messages. Um, and that's all the setup we need from a trigger point. Uh, so now, what do we do with this, right? Well, and if I click the second node, you'll be able to see uh, all the different things that we can kind of push to, which is great. Uh, for this, as I said, we're going to use Slack. Uh, do -do -do. And again, uh, just to save time, we've already done the config or, or the, the tough parts, right? Um, so it's simply or already account one is already set up. So what we want to do is send a message. And uh, now prior to this, I, we've created an app, uh, you know, a Slack app, connected it to a channel and given it permissions to post in a, in a specific channel. Um, and, and that is going to be high priority tickets. I'm just thinking of the, the use case that I mentioned before uh, around, uh, you know, bringing high priority tickets. And from this, we can actually bring in uh, sort of fields from the Kafka message that we want. Uh, you don't have to, so I could just put, um, you know, database has changed and it's just going to post that same message, or we can bring in something specific. So I always like to do uh, sort of the event type. So, you know, something's been created. So we can just do um, uh, a row has been and then space and then so on. Uh, or we could just actually add a bit of an alert. Uh, so, so it just adds that for each row. Now, once we add this, 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 this flow isn't running as of yet. Uh, and you know what I, I prefer to do just before, and th this is the channel, as you can see, see there's, there's nothing there currently. Uh, we can trigger uh, or try this action so we get a, a test coming through. Um, so we can see that. So th this is obviously a complete test. There's no actual data coming in, so which is why it says sample event type. But we know or we can see that that connection is working, which is good. So if I start that flow, We'll give it a couple of seconds so um, the, the, the flow can be running. And, and now that it is, any new messages to our uh, Arch demo, public demo um, topic here should trigger all the way through from this uh, topic all the way to Slack. So if I switch over to here where I've got um, the, the uh, database and I'm just going to add a new uh, row, I'm just I'm cheating by just getting that. Uh, let's do a different unique ID. Let's do number five. There we go. So that should trigger, a, a, you know, and hopefully you be see that flow, right? So first we should get our new message here. 
um, see that information there, like the message and the email, the fake email I just gave it. And uh, surely uh, in, in a short amount of time, we should see the message pop through uh, into our Slack uh, via the App Connect uh, um, flow. Uh, and we'll, we can even switch back to, where is it? Uh, on our Chrome. Uh, as this is running, we should see that come through. Um, but sometimes there is a bit of a delay as we've seen, um, especially when you're making your first few uh, invocations. So we can let that happen. And if not, we can even jump to some questions while that, that happens in the background. Um, but once you get your first kind of flow in, uh, you, you tend to get the, the follow-up ones to, to be you know, sort of instant. Uh, the, demo, yeah, should be coming through. So the, the God of life demos is, is against the soul. But in the interest of time, um, let's wrap up. Um, if you could switch to the last slide and, and we'll sort yeah. of recap a bit. So what we've been talking about is, is how to take your first few steps into doing event-driven, event-centric, real-time uh, architectures, and how you don't have to completely start from scratch. You don't need to build an entirely new uh, architecture, an entirely new set of applications. Your existing applications are already able to start contributing, because your apps are probably already doing things that you could think of as events. They're, they're doing things, they're responding to things. So getting those events onto an event backbone where they can be responded to asynchronously is really easy. We showed you an example of doing that through HTTP. I'm sure most of your applications are able to make HTTP calls. We showed you an example of using a connector, um, and there are hundreds of connectors for all sorts of different existing systems. And we picked a database as a really common example. Um, and once the events are on the event backbone, you can have your applications respond to them in real time um, so that you can start to bring in that element of, uh, of real time processing of data in flight. So we hope that what we showed you has given you a few ideas. We hope it sort of inspired you to give it maybe a little try. Um, I mentioned at the start, we come from a team called Client Engineering. Our job is to you know, put developers with our customers, sit alongside them and, and do what we call co-creation, develop with you to help you try new things and solve problems. So if you'd like uh, some of our developers to work with you on this, please do get in touch. We'd be happy to sort of explore this space with you. Thank you very much, Dale. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm just going to ask you a, a couple of quick uh, questions. Uh, sorry again about the demo. It really is, you know, <laughs> the curse of demoing during a conference, or uh, you know, it's it is what it is. It's okay. Um, I think um, I want to ask uh, if we've seen uh, the demos, and now if we have people in the audience that are interested in learning more about uh, IBM event, event streams or using Kafka, could you maybe point them to some uh, resources that they may want to check out? Yeah, so we have a site called IBM Developer, um, which is uh, information for developers. There are tutorials. Um, we have, like, there's a, a guided education track. And if you do that, you get a badge at the end of it to sort of show that you've worked your way through. So you can sort of show your manager the, what you've been uh, learning. So yeah, absolutely. Go to developeribm.com, um, have a look there. And there's a whole wealth of information about APIs uh, and about Kafka specifically. Uh, and then uh, just a, a final uh, quick question. Uh, so in this demo, we saw uh, a flow with uh, two nodes, and I see that uh, you know you could actually create with with many nodes. Is there is there an upward limit to the number of nodes that you could create, um, or is it kind of unlimited? No. no, and and quite quite commonly, as you start to get into more complex use cases, um, you will uh, do things like uh, you will take an event off the topic, do some processing to it, manipulate it, transform it in some way, and then put it back to a different topic. Another application can take it off that topic and do something with it. So that's sort of, when we talk about processing data in flight, it's that sort of flexibility that you have that, like you say, you can do sort of multiple nodes, transforming, filtering, uh, supplementing it with data from other systems. You can do all sorts of things with it. Uh, thank you again very much for your, for your demos and for your presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I hope that you both have a pleasant rest of your day, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Stephen. Sorry.